What is up responsible day traders? Today is Monday, July 4th, 2022. I'm Lindsay Duff and this is Responsible Day Trading. So happy Independence Day, everybody. Uh, I am literally supposed to be on a flight right now heading to Vegas, but um, plans change just a little bit. So I'll be heading out tomorrow, just one day shy. So originally I wasn't gonna be able to do this video, but here we are. So let's get this party started. So last week it did like we expected it pulled back, pushed back down. Do I think it's done pulling back? Maybe not just yet. We're gonna look at that in just a minute. But for the most part, these big pullbacks that happen on the daily chart don't really affect the way that we as day traders trade. But what it does affect is the long term that we see it going in a certain direction. So paying attention to it dying out and reasons that may be causing it and how it may be moving in the opposite direction. Um, so that's very important when we're looking at that bigger tick chart. OK, so let's just always keep that in mind. Day is probably going to be a little short and sweet because, um, you know, it's just one of those days. <laughs> So let's go ahead and check out the news and then check out the market. So let's start off with that news. All right. First things first, we're going to want to come over here to news and then we're going to head over to market news. When we get to market news, let's see what we got. Well, today was a holiday. It was open until noon today and uh, closed and then it will open again in about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, nothing on Tuesday, Wednesday. We want to pay attention. We've got uh, we've got news happening right as the market opens, or about half an hour after the market opens. Then we have news again around one o'clock, which is FOMC. We know that that sucker can slow things down just a little bit and then pop off. So we just want to pay attention to when these things happen. Thursday, there's pre-market and then crude inventory, inventory, I can never say that word, and then crude inventories at 10. Uh, Friday, some pre-market. So with the holiday this week and a lot of things going on, we may want to, uh, it, it may be a little bit of a slower week. So just paying attention to what the market has to say. All right, so let's start off with our daily chart. So what I wanna look at is what's happening right here in the MACDs, right in this spot. So as this pulled back, and made a double bar and pushed down really, really hard right now, the MACDs did not make it outside of the Bollinger Band. With such a push like this, we would kind of expect it to push through. We're having more of what I think is gonna happen like right in here. Look at the distance between the Bollinger Bands here and the Bollinger Bands here. Now, what happened was, this BB pulled back and we made this really low uh, pullback that happened here. And now we've made somewhat of a double bar and it's pushed up just a little bit more. Now, what we will probably see happen is see these BBs continue up and maybe even come back up all the way around here before it pushes down. Now I can say that and honestly, it's in a space where it could drop right now. We made these closes towards the top of the bar and the fact that we didn't break out of that top Bollinger Band means that it could roll off of it and continue down. But just a couple of days ago, we got this little pullback in the BB and while it's not insignificant, it also plays a very significant part. Let's just go ahead and look at this with the crosshairs. You can see that through this, all this pullback, we would expect a lot more to happen Sorry, my child showed up from work. What I was talking about here though is as this pulls back and we pushed back up, when we pulled back, this little BB barely moving and not even changing colors was a really great in indication that it was going to continue to the upside. And we may see this continue up just a little bit more, maybe see a strong push towards the EMAs, something similar to what we see here comes back, pushes up. Um, what we saw back in here, you can see it pushed up, never broke through these bands while the BBs were pushing up. So honestly, I'm really going to anticipate something that looks like this right here to happen. Um, 
as we pull back into these EMAs and just kind of bounce around between the areas, or we pull back into these Bollinger Bands and just kind of bounce around between the areas. So can it roll off and come back down right here? Yes, because it pulls up and it's got these closes up towards the top and the BBs are still angled up, but they are not angled up with any kind of strength. We're gonna have to see some things happening through the other charts and we may come back to look at this in just a second. But what we wanna see is what are the other charts telling us about the behavior and what may happen? So as you can see, we are back above the zero line and the EMAs. Technically, that is a sign of we're looking for more of a push to the upside. We're sitting at the bottom Bollinger Band here. Great sign. We're way above the zero line. So this is also a great sign for more to the upside as we pulled into the EMAs. Now, one thing about these EMAs is they have not closed or crossed yet. So we like to see them cross in order to really get that umph behind it pushing in that direction. And we do have this BB really trying to push down right here. It's sitting at that bottom Bollinger Band, which is a great space for it to pop up. Uh, but we may see it do something like an M pivot. Just pull up towards that top Bollinger Band and push down. Now, we always have to think like the what if. What if it doesn't do that? What are we anticipating? Well, if it pulls back down in here, I would expect it to pull back to this area, back into the EMAs, and then take off to the downside. And we can just draw some little arrows on there. So we can get just an idea of what I'm talking about here. Pull down, come back up, and then continue down. So that's one scenario, right? Another scenario is that this continues up here and then pulls to the downside, making that M pivot. Or we could have it come down and boom, continue back up. So there's always a, there's never a certain. We have to pay attention to what it's saying, what it's telling us. Um, to know what we are going to identify for the next move. So currently, because it's sitting at this bottom Bollinger Band right here, I am going to anticipate it to at least push up just a little bit more. Um, but like I said, we'll wait and see what happens. Now, let's come down to our three trading charts. And the three tra trading charts will always be the charts that are in front of you. And they may not be these same three charts that I'm using. Oh, and let me move this back over to the ES. They may not be the same charts that I'm using. You may use something like the 1597, 610, 233. You may have the, the 4181 here, uh, or the 4181 here and the 610 here. There's all kinds of different combinations you can use. You just gotta pay attention to how you're putting them together so that they flow together and they're easy to read. So we're gonna start off with the 10,946. I do love that these EMAs are starting to open up to the upside. We had a strong push down in the MACDs. Very weak move back up, even though this was a very strong looking move in the price. It's come back down so far we have a blue BB trying to form right here, which would tell us that we're looking for this to continue up just a little bit more. And that fits in right with the scenario of maybe coming back up to the area up here and pushing back down first, making an M pivot and, you know, a W along the way back up to the M pivot. So possibly uh, see it come back down. But right now the direction, the direction is up. Uh, we are back above the zero line. We're back above the EMAs. The direction is to the upside. So we are looking for more up until that changes. If I'm looking at my 1597 and my 233, the direction has also shifted to the upside. When it pulled back above this area right here and we got back above the EMAs and we got back above the zero line, that actually switched the direction to the upside on the 1597. Now, even if the direction's to the upside, we can still look for short moves because we're looking for it to shift and go in the opposite direction. So even something like this may have been a viable move as it very weakly pulled up and pushed back down. Right now, it is trying to shift to the downside, but it has not. And why has it not shifted to the downside? And it's in particular with what's happening right here and right here. So even though it got below the EMAs here, 
we could not get back below the zero line at this point. So technically our direction is still to the upside here. Uh, same thing is happening here. We're back above the zero line and the EMAs in this area. So the direction is up. I know you're saying, but Lindsay, it got below the zero line here and here. What we really want to see with something like that is to pull away, really disconnect from it and then start closing below that area that disconnected from it. And we don't see that. So as of right here, right now, which may change as soon as the market opens, <laughs> we see the direction is up and we're looking for this to continue to push up a little bit more. Like I said, do I believe that it has longevity to the upside? I really don't at this moment. Um, the longevity that I would be looking for per se is to come back down to this area where the EMAs are. And let's talk about that for just a quick moment. Remember, as this is pushing up, the EMAs will be pushing down because they're an average of everything that's happened in the past. It's not about what's happening right here, right now. So these will come down to greet the area, which would probably put us right about the area of these, uh, this double bar reversal to the downside, maybe just a little bit higher. So we're gonna have to wait and see. I mean, really, ideally, it's something similar to this that we're looking for. Even though it didn't make a new low, we're looking for it, it has pulled back, pushed back up into the areas of the EMA that gives us a space to take the trade and move with the bigger move in the direction of the EMAs and the MACDs below the zero line. Do I expect it to go down right here right now? I kind of don't. I expect it to push back up. Can it? Yeah, it's got signals that it definitely could. So we just want to pay attention to that kind of thing. So long story short, I won't be here the rest of this week. <laughs> I'm gonna be in Vegas, then I'll be in Austin for a couple of days, and then I'll be home and it'll be business as usual again. Although there is a chance that I'll be leaving fairly soon for that after that to Columbia, but that's, I'll be able to still be with you guys while I'm in Columbia. So that will be a longer term gig <laughs> out there. So that'll be a nice workcation, you know? That's what, I, that's what I like to call it all. It's just all workcations because I can still work while I play. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap it up. I'm sorry I don't have a whole ton of words of wisdom today. I literally just woke up from a long nap after a little bit of a frustration about not being able to leave today. So that's just part of life, though, you know? I'm not mad at anybody. <laughs> it just happens. All right. Guys, I hope everybody has a wonderful week. I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July. And as always, you know that I look forward to catching you on the profitable side.